I love this. The Wealth Whisperer. Winnie's son is here to make us smart. Aw, so nice. It's like coming to hang out with my friends. Like, where have you been all week? Hogs, 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 hog, hog. yeah. Yes. What's up, Jim, Chris? It is great to see you, Winnie. Tell us your story because I think that uh, people need to know, I mean, you have an incredible story. Your journey to how you have gotten to be where you are is not, I would say, your typical story. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, I love you so much. I'm so glad the two of you are here and doing this. So, you know, when people see me on television or perhaps you have read some of the articles on Forbes and whatnot, you might think, well, oh, well, she's a financial person. So maybe, you know, maybe her parents were in the industry. Like she must have known money her whole life. And actually, that's what's interesting because that's not how it started. I, I simply um, came to a decision to do this sort of by accident. So um, long story short, when I was a financial advisor, um, and even before, I guess I say way back, the reason why I decided to sort of go into finance was because three months before I was about to start college, my parents actually had to go into bankruptcy. Um, and it wasn't that they weren't good savers because they were extraordinary savers, like like literally down to every penny because they were immigrants from Taiwan coming to the United States, not a lot of money, but very educated, right? So they knew to save money. They just didn't know how to invest. So basically, um, you know, they invested in a real estate project that went sour, that was supposed to take care of my college education. And so basically my really tough mom pull me aside. And she says, you know, I know you worked really hard to get into college. I know you wanted to go to this school or that school, but unfortunately we lost it all. So, so it just became a point where my dad was, um, you know, he was, he was so distraught. He felt so guilty because he had made a bad financial decision. So my mom basically had to pick us up and, um, I had to go to, I was going to college, changed schools, went public, which wasn't a bad decision, went to UCLA. Um, and then from there, you know, not only was I starting school, but I was looking for work right off the back. So I basically graduated a uh, short, uh, less than four years, um, and just decided I needed to hurry up and find work, which ended up uh, having me work in television. So I ended up owning a television audience production company and I handled shows such as Americans Funniest Videos, Will of Fortune, Jeopardy, MTV, um, The Gladiators, all these things, and was moving audience members to and from different shows in Hollywood. So by the time I reached the age of 20, 23, 24, we were the second largest in the United States, moving thousands of people per week. And then, um, then really I decided to go attend a recruiting session for Smith Barney because I was taking the CFP program at night, hoping to help my parents sort of decipher financial decisions. And so it was, it was sort of by accident that I ended up in finance. But once I got into it, did I realize how much I didn't belong in finance? Um, but I'm still, well, I'm not, I'm not just still here. But obviously, uh, they were wrong that I didn't belong. I actually made my own way of making sure that I belong. <laughs> wow. That's, that is an incredible, incredible story. And it's inspiring. So, so why do you feel like you you didn't belong in finance? What uh, what was your, like, before you, you you went into finance, what, what were your aspirations? And, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we think we're in control. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we find something else that we're, you know, maybe equally or more passionate about. What did you want to, what, what was your uh, aspirations before you became, you know, the, the wealth whisperer? Well, Chris, you know, it's really interesting because I didn't know what a financial advisor was. Like, you know, we didn't have a lot of money growing up and I didn't know a lot of wealthy people. And so when when I joined, when Smith Barney offered me the position, they, you know, they have you interview at different locations. And I was going to, I interviewed at Westwood near UCLA and then Pasadena, right? And then um, Brea, which was closer to my parents' house. And um, it was interesting because, um, one office would be, give me a really great offer. And I, I didn't understand why that, that time later on, I found out was because you get a bonus for hiring minorities at that time. Right. Probably now as well. And then another office, um, she, the manager flat out said, I, I just don't get it. I don't see what they see in you. And she gave me such a low offer that I wouldn't even be able to survive, you know, financially myself. 
But it's interesting because the day, the first week I started in production as a financial advisor, I was actually my biggest client. Because remember, I had sold my business um, to a competitor to be able to go. So people didn't realize like, you know, just because I don't look the part. And that was the thing in the financial industry. There aren't a lot of people that look like me. I mean, certainly um, not so when I started and certainly not so even now. Uh, I think, you know, minorities make up like, you know, we're in the teens and then to be female and minority, it's like, they say, we don't even track that number because it's so small. So, so that's what I meant. I mean, I don't know exactly what I was destined to be. You know, my parents, pretty much typical Asian parents, you got three choices, engineer, attorney, or doctor, your choice. So I'm like, (laughs) you know, I went into UCLA as bio biology and I quickly recognized that, yeah, being a doctor, was it really what I wanted was what my parents wanted. So my parents are like, well, Mm -hmm. next one, then attorney, you'll be an attorney. So I was pre-law at UCLA, political science. And, you know, so it, again, it it just kind of happened. Oops. It just kind of happened. And then we all got in there. And, um, so I would, I always say it's kind of like the accidental, uh, profession, but it turned out really well, and I and I'm grateful for that. That's that's interesting, Winnie, because even my mother, who is from South America, she was always wanting one of us, you know, to be a lawyer, and none of us, none of us did that. So sorry, mom, if you're watching, <laughs> that we're not lawyers. But hey, we're, we're live on Amazon with Winnie's son. You should be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you did pretty good there, Jim. Uh, yes, you making uh, making mom proud. That's just such a killer story, and I love the fact that you, you know, at the time, minority woman in that business, and um, I think you've done a lot um, to um, to change that, right? And and uh, so, how how have you seen how have you seen that change in in your industry in terms of uh, of women and minorities being involved? Involved in that, and do you do you sense it? Uh, does it you know what's what's needed there to uh, to maybe uh, improve it even that much more? So it's such a great question. I mean, like I honestly didn't didn't even really think of myself as a minority female until I got into the financial space. I grew up in Los Angeles. I was born in Los Angeles. I felt as American as they came by, right? Like my parents will tell you, they were like knocking me on the top of my head, thinking I should speak to learn to speak Chinese better. And all the time, I, I basically was fighting that tooth and nail, but it wasn't until I, I got hired there that I learned the term double minority because they're like, Oh, you know, the manager got a great deal hiring you because you're a double minority. And And then at 20 something years old, you're like, ha ha. And then you're like, what? (laughs) But you know, (laughs) I think now it's certainly, I think people are much more aware. And so I think that's a, a certainly a positive. And um, I think there's more people who are becoming successful that don't mit, that don't fit that 100% mold of what the typical financial advisor is, right? So that's been helpful. And um, what, I, what I would love to see though, and this is really interesting because even in 2021, where we're at right now, there isn't actually maternity leave for financial advisors. So I remember um, I met a woman and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This is, I was early on in my career. I'm like, I'm such a fan. You know, you've done so many things. I'm so excited because you're actually a working mom. And she turns to me and she goes like, oh my goodness, I have my kids before I started this industry. Having kids in this industry, that's like career suicide. And then she was very rude and she turned away. I was like, whoa. (laughs) So I wanted to have it all. And I was like, you know what? Why not me? Why can't I do it? So I end up, you know, uh, being a financial advisor, having three kids and being a very, very active parent. I'm like totally active with my kids. Um, And, you know, I think, you know, you just have to define what's most important to you and you just make sure that that happens. And I think about our career and I'm sure the two of you th- have thought this all uh, along the way as well. You know, one thing that I've always said is, why not me? Right. People will say like, oh, you know, you know, you shouldn't do that. Or you're just a finance. You're just a financial advisor. You're just a da-da. You're just a, you know, female. You're just a mom. You're just. And I always say, well, why not me? Why can't I do that? Why can't? And so I think you have to come to a point where you decide that you're the only one that's allowed to define you. And then once you own that and you don't let anybody else's drama or definition of you come into your world, that's when the magic happens. Because just like you said, I mean, I've been doing social media 
when people were saying like to me all the time, why are you doing social media? If you would just do cold calling more, do more seminars, we'd probably have more business. You'd probably have more business. Financial advisors shouldn't be doing social media. Social media is for like, you know, like teenagers. What a waste of time. I mean, I was listening to that for years. Well, all of a sudden now, like now I was like, oh, you know, every financial advisor should do social media. Well, okay. Well, I've had like, uh, probably 10 more years of training. So, so thank, thankful for that. You know, now they're like, Oh, so smart that you did this. I, you think? <laughs> <laughs> and I would have to say maybe Jim, um, she is the only financial advisor that's an Amazon influencer. I, I, <laughs> what do you I think? think so. As far as I know that that's based on our, what, what little we know, cause Amazon hides a lot of things. I, I believe that's true, Chris. But I want to go back to what you just said, Winnie, because that's something even now, I, and I have friends, they may be watching or I'm going to send them a link to the replay so they maybe will get some free advice from one of the best because they, they, it's that whole thing like, oh, I, I don't want to be on social media or, or I can't be on social media because I'll, I'll get in trouble. Well, I, I've never heard of Winnie's son getting in trouble for being on social media. What, what do you think is the approach the problem with their approach and how were you able to kind of like put, put that hand up to the naysayers and say, you know what, I'm going to do this anyway. Absolutely. You know, so Jim, that's a good question because for years, like, especially when I first started, it was like, well, nobody's ever done that before. So we don't have a guideline for that. We don't know what you can and cannot say. There was like a lot of gray, but I think what happened was, you know, I think this is, definitely a benefit from coming from a background of television over to this. I knew that there were certain things that I wanted to share. And I recognized that there were limitations, like just like marketing and whatnot. Everything that we do has to be compliance approved that we share out, right? With the exception of social media. Social media is then approved on the back end after it goes live. But you have to go through significant training and whatnot to make sure you know what you can and cannot do. So for me, it's actually very easy. I know exactly what I can and cannot do. It's basically this. I basically don't give um, investment advice, um, investment advice, whether I'm on CNBC or Fox Business or live, doesn't matter the platform. I don't give investment advice and I don't talk about things. I don't comment on things like cryptocurrency. There's a lot of areas that I just won't touch, right? And of course, because I'm a mom anyway, um, anything that I share is going to be completely acceptable if there's a newborn in the room or a child in the room. Nothing that I say is going to uh, be inappropriate. So I think that's the thing is once you know the guidelines and your compliance department is comfortable with you doing this, then I think you'll find more opportunities that you they're going to be able to say yes because they can trust you. So for me, um, at Smith Barney, it was definitely much more challenging. Smith Barney got bought out by Morgan Stanley. I joined an independent firm. And so they give me um, more flexibility because they also know we have a very close relationship. And then I talk to them and communicate with them regularly on what I'm doing. So there's like no misunderstanding. So it's, it's, it's trust. I do have, you know, certain, certain privileges come with more trust and understanding. So I would say that if you're someone in our industry or even the legal industry or the medical industry, and you're interested in doing something like that, all you need to do is spend some time um, with your compliance team, you know, and just spend a week and find out what works and what doesn't work, what things you absolutely shouldn't touch. And then you're going to find there's more things that you can talk about than there are not. I mean, I can spend time with Chris and Jim like all day long because we're talking people talk. And guess what? People talk is very compliant. <laughs> it probably makes people's brains swim. All of the rules, the regulations you got, you can say this, you can't say. Mm -hmm. And I think most people, when they see that, they look at those as roadblocks. And you just looked at it as like, I can do this, I could do this, I could do that. And you were, you were plowing through those roadblocks in order to do what you needed to do. And I think the one thing I, that I, and I'd love to hear about your experience on television and comparing it to what you do on live streaming, because when you talk about rules in terms of live streaming outside of the financial stuff that were, that you just spoke about, there really are no rules. Like you could go live whenever you want. You can go live on all kinds of platforms, not just Amazon, but uh, just like, it's, it's ridiculous how that is just how that, that tide is rising right now, where there really are not that many rules outside of you know FTC regulations and things like that. Um, but for the most part, 
there are no rules. You can set your own times. And, and when you're on broadcast television, it's like, well, we got to take a break. We got to pay the bills. You know, there's all kinds of regimented run of show things. What are some of the, uh, I, I guess, the differences that, uh, that you see sort of good and bad? Because you really leaned in hard on live streaming, mm-hmm. um, even though broadcast is, is still, uh, television is still what, you're, uh, what you do. So great question. Um, you know, people ask me that all the time. Like, well, I, I am on um, national TV every week. So I have a regular segment with Fox that's every week, uh, Fox Business every week. And then I do CNBC regularly, Yahoo Finance and other, you know, um, network television as well as like Good Day LA. I do that. Um, you know, the difference between the two, um, they're, they're actually very similar, but they're different in a way in that when you do your live streaming show, it's really your show. So you can customize that content. So now my show after it gets live streamed, then um, also goes on to NASDAQ, Amazon Fire and Roku. And it's going on a couple of new platforms. We've been added onto a couple of new platforms. So that'll be coming more so there. I mean, you get to customize exactly what you want to talk about. So that's what's different. On, on TV, you know, I also get to sort of customize a little bit about what I want to talk about. But really, ultimately, it's up to the host of what value we can add to the audience. Um, I would say, like, one doesn't trade off the other because... Uh, you know, I am actually, believe it or not, an extreme introvert, like not an introvert, like you would just a normal introvert to a point where, um, like I actually didn't speak until I was 12 years old. You know, I was like so shy and so insecure and I worked through that personally. But one of the things that I find really comforting is that live streaming makes you much better on television. In fact, I remember the first time I was on CNBC, right? And, um, I was so nervous. I went to New York. And the producer called my publicist and my publicist. So how did she do? And then I remember she said, or she, he or she at the time, and they said, well, you know, she looks the part, she knows her stuff, but there's something wrong with like the overall. So I, I went through so much media training to try and fix my presentation. And the thing that actually worked the best over anything, I spent like so much money to try and get better, but what fixed it, which is free, which everybody can do is at the time there was basically just Facebook Live. So I was doing Facebook Live at first just for myself and not going publicly live, but that's how I got better doing it each and every day. So now actually I feel like I'm an extremely good financial advisor. I mean, outside of the Forbes Awards and the Barron's Awards and those awards, I'm very grateful to be, you know, ranked by Forbes and Barron's and whatnot. But, you know, when I do live streaming each and every day, You'll be hard pressed to find a financial advisor who does this for a living, keep up with the intricacies of market financial investment news as detailed as I am. Because if you have to talk about this on air, you know, every day, you really need to know what you're talking about constantly. So it's, it's, it's the whole process. Like we, we really actually went live five days a week because we used to, uh, fly to New York City from Los Angeles uh, to film my show, which is co-produced by NASDAQ, right? And then once COVID hit, we couldn't do that anymore. So I said, why don't we try doing live streaming? So we literally went live stream every single day with the exception of the day where we went dark for Black Lives Matter. And um, yeah, it was it was an experience. <laughs> when you do it every day, it's like, you know, you're like an Olympian of live streaming. <laughs> But I think you all know, because you know how much work goes be behind a show. But when you're like, you know, and then, then you have to script out your day each and every day. It's, it's bananas, but it makes you really good at it. <laughs> I bet. And you've, I know you've got a team around you mm-hmm. that, um, you know, must be fantastic as well in order to, to handle that. Because, yeah, I mean, every single day live streaming is just taking that on. I can't, it makes, it, you know, it makes me like shiver to even, even think about it. You know, Jim and I went live on, uh, on prime day. Um, and there was, that was two days and I think a total of like nine hours, That's bananas. um, over, over those two days. Right. And so, um, but I mean, that's, that's different. That's more of like, uh, some, somewhat of a marathon as opposed to, um, you know, you're, you're doing sprints every day and then you've got a plan for that sprint days in advance. Um, and so you're, you're doing one, but you're working on, you know, three or four others at the same time before that's happening. And so that's a lot, that's a huge undertaking. Um, so I, let, can you talk a little bit about, about level up and, mm-hmm. and what, uh, what that shows about and, you know, where people can, um, can find it. Cause I know I, you know, I've caught some episodes like, 
The one you had with Rob Balasabas was was one that uh, I thought was especially good. Rob's a friend, and and so we, we um, love Rob. Can you? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So can you uh, can you talk a little bit about Level Up and some of the experiences you've had there? Sure. Well, Chris's was crazy as people don't actually know this because it's financial news um, and business mm-hmm. entrepreneur news. I literally prep my script each and every day before the show. So it's because you can't give old financial news. That'd be weird. So, um, so actually w- what happens is the market closes at one. I've started my script probably be 11 a.m. that day. And then market closes at one. I update things, update things more. And then we usually go live at 2.30. So Level Up um, is the actual show show that sits on um, NASDAQ, Amazon Fire, Roku, and it's going on some other platform soon. But that's our real show. And then the live stream show is basically Level Up Live. That's where we do, I do a daily market update, pretty much daily. And then we have guests guests in that come in. And when the guest interviews are appropriate then for the NASDAQ um, audience or whatnot, I want to just say we also stream on, on Modern Mom as well, which is one of the largest parenting platforms. Um, but if it's appropriate, then, you know, my team will uh, edit it up. And by the way, Curtis Peak, who's my creative director, is a genius. He's been with me like since he was 19 years old, like the nicest human being. But he helps me get everything packaged up with his team as well. And then we ship that out and that goes uh, there. So, yeah, it would be really fun. And probably I always say, like, you know, wherever you are on social, just find me. And that's where you can catch the show. And then now on Thursdays, I do a really fun show. Uh, with my co-host now, uh, a longtime friend of mine. You may know him. Uh, his name is Greg Dimbler. He uh, was the host of Digital Trends for years, and as well as the uh, the Portland Trailblazers. I mean, he's he's a legend in TV world. And so he he and I do a really fun show on Thursdays called The Loop, which is a combination of finance and tech. So it kind of been tech, right? Been tech, and we do really cool stuff. That show is kind of more of a lifestyle show. Um, and if let me just tell you, everybody who's watched one show of that gets hooked because uh, we show some pretty cool stuff. And we we have some really interesting ho- uh, guests. So depending on which platform works well, uh, that's what we put them on to. So that actually, The Loop is now going to be a, a small segment of Level Up's o- uh, overall show. And and you know, Winnie, you have gotten so comfortable with live streaming. I mean, it's for me, it's hard to believe the way that you talk and interact, but maybe it's because we've gotten to know each other. I, I find it hard to believe that you're an introvert. So I'm going to take you at your word at it. <laughs> yeah, you asked my husband. <laughs> tell you. It's like if, when it's like the camera's off, right? And he'll say like, like let's say his family's over or whatever. He'll say, come out, come out. But after a while, like all that, I got to go in darkness and just sit there and lie there for a little bit. And it's funny because I see my kids. See, my kids are like this. <laughs> Well, and that and that's the other thing is you've been doing all this, like you said, the kids have been at home, right? They're around. I mean, the fact that you've been able to balance a very, you know, not only is it a challenging career, but like you said, it's fast moving. You know, things happen, and I and I catch, you know, as I follow you, I catch things all the time. It's like you're talking about the latest on inflation, or you're talking about the impact of, you know. People saying things because we know some so many times the markets are really triggered by emotion because of what somebody said and it's not always based on on facts and you you do a great job of of cutting cutting through all that stuff. Um, what do you think is one of the things that people um, need to I guess think about when it comes to uh, like live streaming as a business as an entrepreneur? You think that more need to do it and get themselves out there? No, I don't think you need to do it. And because, you know, not everybody needs business, but if you need business, you might consider <laughs> doing it. So that's, you know, <laughs> every people always say like, oh, when I do social media, I'm like, no, you don't have to do social media. If you don't need business, you know, just don't do social media. Then it says that you're closed. So you save a lot of time. The door is closed. Right? So, <laughs> Let's see what you did there. <laughs> oh, but if you know, if you want to be good at speaking to your clients, you know, meet, reaching new audience, finding that next potential client, then I think social media in general is a non-negotiable because social media is just communication. And then I think live streaming is so good because it gives you a better sense of self-awareness of your weaknesses and your strengths, and it continues to challenge you. And it keeps you on your game. It really does, regardless of what industry you are at. 
Um, like we know, like, right. I mean, Jim, like you and I, we, you know, you and I talked about this so many times. I mean, every time I see Jim in a Twitter spaces, in a clubhouse, anywhere, right? I'm like, oh my goodness, I got to put Jim. Cause you know, if I get together with Jim, number one, he's going to have something really intuitive to say. He's going to be really smart, yep. well-spoken and the quality is going to be perfect. So, you know, you, you, you do this so that you can be the go-to for other people who are such high level professionals. I actually spent a whole afternoon with Chris and Jim and, and maybe some of you would want that too. And I'm guessing many of you would want that. So we have to earn that right. And in order to do that, you got to practice a lot. People always say, wow, Winnie, you're like a natural on television. I'm like, <laughs> seven years in the making, natural. That's right. right? Podcasters, live streamers, uh, everyone gets stuck and they, and even before they do their first show and they just, um, and I always tell people, you know, do your first show because your second one's going to be better. And your third one's going to be better than that. And you've got to put those reps in. You can't just snap your mm -hmm. fingers and be great. And you can't expect to watch some YouTube videos and have it be easy for you. They're really, it, you have to put forth the exercise. You don't get to um, in shape for a, a marathon by um, doing not a lot. I mean, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta train. Um, and, and I think that's, that's what you've shown is like, and uh, listen, a lot of people will see you and think that it's, it's a God given ability. And it just like, you just woke up like this. You just like all of a sudden, boom, level up and the loop and, and Forbes and everything else just, just rolled, you know, it just was a, but you know, a lot, not a lot of people um, understand that there's a there was a lot of hard work involved in in what you what you do, and it, and most people unfortunately aren't willing to do the hard work that it's necessary that's necessary to be successful. And I don't mean just financially successful. Mm -hmm. I mean successful, however you may want to define it. Exactly. And I think success for you, and you talked about it earlier, is how you're able to, and it's not work-life balance, how you're able to incorporate your life and your job, your family and, and your, your three kids. How old are your kids, by the way? Uh, 12, 9, 7 uh, are my, my kiddos. So right now I'm actually, I, I, I'm sure you can sense this, but I'm actually more stressed out now than ever um, because my kids are about to start school in three weeks. And, you know, a parent with little ones going to school, COVID is like, Whoa! but yeah. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. We're trying to just And you're about to have a teenager. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. I actually read Jim so. But you know, um my yeah, I, I feel very grateful. I I mean I have a three pack of boys. Um they are just the most wonderful, thoughtful human beings. And yeah, you know, my, my 12 year old, actually I'm five foot six, which isn't like, isn't really tall, but not really short either. But my, my 12 year olds as tall as me already. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so, so Winnie, yeah. um, what do you, what do you think, uh, for someone that does decide to listen to you and does des decide to start live streaming, what are some tips you would give them to to get started. I mean, I love the fact that you shared that, you know, because I don't think Chris and I would have ever thought that Winnie's son was nervous about live streaming. And here you were going on Facebook, in a sense, to practice getting comfortable about that. And I think that in and of itself is a great thing to do, right? If you're, you know, get a, a private Facebook group and just practice in there and then start maybe going on your profile. But what are some other things that you think people could do to get ready uh, to start their own live stream to help their business? Yeah, I think it's a great question, Jim. And I'm going to share with you actually um, how I taught my kids. My kids actually are very, very good on video and they've, they've made a lot of videos. My nine-year-old, who's my, my middle child, I will say is actually stand out. Um, I think right now he he's good enough to do his own YouTube channel. He's so good. He actually created a video on how you should create videos. But basically what I, I do with my kids, because obviously they're all very shy, right? Um, how do I get them out of their own skin was basically stick up an iPad, put it on uh, FaceTime. And so they could see themselves and we would just record and record and record. And then they would watch themselves. And I think that's the best thing that you can do as a professional as well, is you got to force yourself to watch yourself. I hate watching myself. Curtis will tell you, since he started working with me, he's probably gotten me to watch my own videos, maybe less than five times. I just, I can't stand my voice. My, I, But 
when I first started, I had to do that. So that's how I taught my kids to, that's how you can tell how you're making eye contact, right? How you're smiling, how you're moving, how your hands, without that, you're never going to get good because you're relying on someone else to coach you. And most people are too polite to, to be so critical. And we're more critical on ourselves, which is good because you need that self-awareness when you go on video. Then once you do that, you start to learn from people who do it very well. I remember uh, my publicist who I have now, who she's going to be my publicist for life. She was incredible. I think when I first started working with her, um, she told me to watch certain um, television. I think it was like... There's a few big um, anchors on television, CNN, like ABC, whatever. And she, I think um, Brian Williams was one of them. She would have me watch and I would watch Oprah Winfrey and I would watch how they spoke and what they did. And that's how I got better too. And then once I saw them, I would then go back to practice. And then the other thing I would say is you need to then, you need to take that step. After you do this for a week or two, you need to go live because until you go live, you'll never fully feel that stress. And the stress is good because when you're stressed out and you're worried, my business partner told me this. He says, it's good because because I used to take him with me to CNBC in New York to film because I get all nervous. He's like, yeah, you're nervous because you care. And when you care, that means you're going to do the best that you can. So even now, like before I came on here with Jim and Chris, honestly, I was like, like oh, yo, yo, yo. okay, I'm hoping like I don't mess everything up. I still care. And so you got to keep practicing, but never feel like, you know, you know everything and keep on learning from other people who you admire, but then a good portion of your time should be spent on research. So I actually research people that are not in my industry. Obviously not a lot of people in my industry do what I do, but I look at other people who I admire and, and I find out, oh, like for example, before we started right now, I texted Curtis, my creative director. I'm like, did you see how they, they zoomed in on their intro? That was super cool. <laughs> and then Curtis text me, I saw. <laughs> and so those are the things that you pick up on, right? And then you make sure then uh, if you're invited to an opportunity like this, you want to make sure that you deliver because if someone's kind enough to invite you to their show, like you need to make sure that you you do that. So so a lot of people say like, oh, Winnie, how do you get, how do you get me on CNBC? Can you get me on Forbes? And can you get me on, you know, um, Yahoo Finance or uh, Wall Street Journal or get me an op-ed? I'm like, the thing, the thing is like, you can't ask for those opportunities. It's best when they come and ask for you. And that was key is was like, once I started doing live streaming all the time and I started getting much more comfortable, the opportunities started to come. I think that's so true, Winnie. I think even Chris and I have been, uh, humbled and amazed at the fact that once we started doing this Amazon show and people started hearing about it, we get asked like, "Hey, would you come on and talk about Amazon?" and and we love to. We don't go out there, you know, and then say, "Hey, would you interview us about this?" We, I, I think that's a great thing. Is right? It's I guess it's what we would call earned media, as opposed mm -hmm. to you know paid media. Like you know, because sometimes like, "Oh, would you like to be on our show?" You got to pay for it. You know, that's uh, something too. I would tell people to stay yeah. away from is pay to, uh, play. pay to play. But okay, but I need to I need to interrupt you here for just one second, though, Jim, because I'm gonna say if you have a show, you definitely should get Jim and Chris on your show to talk about Amazon Live. And I I say this sincerely because they are not only so good at Amazon Live, but they're sincerely incredible teachers and very generous educators. And I know I'm pushing Jim and Chris to do a whole course and everything on this, but it's they coming, by the way. It's the coming. Of the best. Yeah. I mean, keep them under radar. Make sure you find out when that course is coming out because it, it will be worth absolutely everything. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that. I'm just going to put it out there. And I don't say that about everything, but these two human beings are like great, great human beings. Like, like what you see right now, so much even better in person, right? Even better humans than you thought. So, okay. Sorry. Oh, thank, thank <laughs> wow. you. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. We're, it's we're, true though. Um, yeah. Thank you. You know, I adore you know, this um, So the show is about you now, Winnie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know she's, she's going to uh, make no, us speechless, but, right? Yeah. We don't know what to say now. Right. Exactly. You're trying to make, you're trying to make my, uh, my camera and, and turn, when I turn red, I'm going to, who knows what the background. camera's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You talked about um, going stress, getting stressed before you go live, and um, and the person you spoke to said that's good. That means you care. I also think, 
in, in a lot of ways, if you're going to get better at something, you have to go through, uh, uh, if, if everything's easy, you're not going to get better. Um, I used to I'd tell the story about, uh, you know, when I, w- when I was working at Sony, I had certain bosses and they would give me evaluations and the evaluations would be like, oh, everything's great. You know, uh, good job. Here's your bonus. La di da. It was like, that's the worst evaluation ever. Like, I want to get better. Tell me what I need to do to get better. Put me through, uh, you know, the steps, the stress so that I can get better. And I think a lot of times, you know, physically, you know, when you, when you work out and you're sore afterwards, th- that's your muscles, you know, uh, getting, you know, stronger, right? They're, they're rebuilding. And uh, then you'll be, you go through training. And I think when you get stressed, even the brain, it's, it's, it's very much like that is when you go through something that where it's a deadline or, or like you're talking about any stress from, from a live streaming situation, you've got to go through it. When you hit that red button and you know, it's going out into the world, right? There is just something about that, that, uh, you just have to go. We're doing it right now in front of, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of people. And I don't think about it. Right. Because if I really thought about it, I might start freaking out a little bit, you know, but that's good. Right. I mean, so I just I just wanted to underline that comment. I think it's really important for people who are stuck that don't that don't go through the reps. It's OK. Um, I encourage people. I mean, I Winnie, do you ever go back and, and, and look at an old video of, of <laughs> you? I know you said you don't like you don't like to. But I think it's, you know, if you could look at how far you came. Um, and show someone else that I know that's a, that's a vulnerable kind of thing for you. But I think if people saw that, they're like, well, if, if that's Winnie Sun's first video, I could do a first video maybe. I yeah. Don't. It was really bad. So yeah, that's actually, that would be a great <laughs> exercise. I'll have to talk curse about that. It, it's so true. You know, um, I mean, you're never going to be happy with yourself. I mean, I even look at videos from 12 months before 12 weeks before I'm like, like I did it. I did my stream uh, last week with Greg and I interviewed, um, one of my best friends, you know, he's got, uh, he just passed a billion views on YouTube. Um, uh, Mikey Chen. And, you know, and I was like, I was like, I didn't transition well. I'm like, after the show, I was kind of beating myself. I'm like, Oh, Greg, I didn't transition so well over you and this and that. So it's like, you're always going to still make mistakes. But the good thing is, you know, one of my managers, John Knapp at, Smith Barney told me this and I love this and I will repeat this all day long. You know, you're not doing brain surgery, right? If you make a mistake, you can fix the mistake most, in most cases. So just try and then keep trying. And then, and, and more importantly, the earlier you try, the better. So if you're watching this, maybe you're someone younger, maybe you're um, you know, Gen Z or maybe even younger than that, like my little kids, right? It's a perfect time to try this and get better at it because it's much harder to wait. And we've already seen what's developed in social media in the last decade. Imagine another 10 years from now, um, you know, TikTok is going to look really old. So this is, this is the time to do it. I mean, I'm guessing Jim and Chris will be on an island somewhere like having like pina coladas because they'll be like, you know. With our red stapler. Yeah, 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 that's right. And they'll have a little easy button right there because things will just come in. It, it'll be, it'll be really great. But you want to, if you're thinking about it or you've thought about it, there's going to be a million reasons why you shouldn't do it. And you only need one reason why you should do it. And that's This is what I tell myself each and every day. My goal each and every day is to reach my full potential. That I feel good that I I gave it an all to to reach my full potential, whatever that may be, right? If you if you watch the Lego cartoons like I do with my kids, you know, reach that full potential. But you gotta get to a point where you feel good, like, wow, okay, cool. I got I did that check. I did that check. But you know what? If I could do this this other thing, right? And, and to a point where at, at some point, you're not going to be scared of pressing that red button anymore and adding Amazon live and adding, you know, whatever their live thing that'll be in the future. Um, it'll just be that next chapter, another thing that you try. And the cool thing about, I know what the two of you do and what I try to follow you and do too, is I try to keep up and at least try different platforms at least a little bit to say that you've exposure. And I think that's critical because to have that sense of worth, only you can define your worth. And I think you have to, at some point, decide, get rid of the negatomes or negative people in your life. But most important, get rid of the negative voice in your mind that's mm-hmm. keeping you from trying. Because nobody's keeping you from trying except you. And these platforms are generally free. So 
not sure why you wouldn't try it unless, like you said, you know, maybe you just have, you know, you're just so busy and you got so much money that and so much business and so many clients coming out of ears that you really don't want. You want like to reduce your clients. <laughs> nah, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Jim says, uh, Jim's one of Jim's favorite phrases, um, that I'm sure he stole from, from, from somebody. Um, no, as, uh, you know, it's just work on getting 1% better every day. And, you know, if, in, like you said, reach your full potential, did I accomplish, is, am I plus or minus today? Did I move forward or did I move backwards? There's no in between, right? Everybody just wants, you know, today was just, uh, this day. Now, it, you, it, did you move forward or did you move backward? And lots of times that's forward momentum is not is is a little bit left or a little bit right, right? As long as you're moving in that direction, um, that's that's where you need to be. And I think that's I think that's great advice for uh for literally everyone. Um, because that that's gonna change that mindset. That's gonna keep that mind junk out of your head that says you're not good enough or you're comparing yourself to someone else, like all that stuff that listen, we're all guilty of we have, but we all have to keep reminding ourselves like that like i did i reach my full potential today i think that's fantastic well and i and i want to add too when you bring up something too that i think as as a parent of now you know 20 somethings we put so much pressure on our kids sub, sometimes to be like to succeed and we don't accept failure right and so but now we realize like you know what it's okay to fail you know, you're not going to be perfect. You know, as I, I also got this from a, a conference I was at a couple of years ago with my business coach, Kelly Roach, the P in perfection is poison. And, you know, so sometimes even with these YouTubers, they spend all this time trying to make the perfect video, right? That's the beauty of live streaming. We're going to make mistakes, but this is the real us. All three of us are real. We're in person. If we mess up, that's okay. We're going to laugh at it and keep going on. And I think that that's what is so uh, so critical that people need to think about is like, you know, quit trying to be perfect. You're, no one's going to be perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. Learn, you know, if anything, I always, I, I like to say like when I was in the Marines, you know, because I, we, we would, you know, make mistakes and it, I would, my, you know, sometimes my boss would counsel me about it and I would just like, you know, my lesson was, don't make the same mistake twice. And how do you prevent that? Put processes in place to try to prevent that from happening again. It's not to say it won't, but at least if you've taken action, you can try to prevent, you know, it's kind of like things like setting alarms. Like if you're not getting up early and it's like, well, my alarm didn't go off. Well, then have a backup alarm. You know, just just silly things like that, I guess. Well, and then being a Marine, that's like you make a mistake. That's that's definitely life or death. But like live streaming is not life or death. So, you know, keep that <laughs> right. in perspective. Like we're not doing brain surgery. Life is going to be OK. Tomorrow, the sun will still come up and it'll still go down. So you just got to try. And the, the best thing is I say is like when you go through this live streaming process, you'll learn so much about yourself. And I think um, and, and that's critical. And then at no point. Are you going to be, you, you know, you can, you can go as high and as far and as, uh, as broad as you want to be. Then you get to define the choices and more opportunities. It's incredible. The opportunities that will come to you if you believe in yourself of that ability to do so. And then like what Jim and Chris said too, it's like training that muscle. You gotta be, you gotta be on it. And the more you can do, yeah, I mean, sure. You'll get a little bit more white hair, but and, you know, you have so much fun along the way, I think. Right. <laughs> so Winnie, um, I know uh, we talked about this earlier, the book, uh, the, the Ross brand book that you Woo-hoo. are, um, you are a, uh, a contributor to, in fact, um, chapter 78 for those who, this is the physical copy, although it is also available on, uh, on Amazon. Let me turn it the right way. Um, also available on Amazon. And I know this was a part of, uh, of the prediction thing, but I know you were also a part of Ross's uh, monetize uh, live stream uh, summit uh, that he had as well. Um, is there anything that you could share from that that maybe isn't behind a paywall that we're, uh, uh, we're doing? Uh, and I, I certainly don't want to take away from, uh, from, uh, from that thing, but I know that um, you know, I attended that virtual conference. And I just, I got a lot out of your, um, your talk, but I mean, there was just so many great people that were a part of that mm-hmm. thing. And 
as a live streamer and monetization, mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you can can touch on there? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think when when if you live stream, like this can be seen as you know, a hobby that you do or, um, telling your story, right. So that your industry no longer tells your story, but you get to tell your story, but also there's so much that you can do from this. I mean, you can take this as far as you want to, you can, I do a ton of work with different brands, whether it be Hilton hotels or chase credit cards, or, you know, like Hertz rent a car and like all these different brands. And, um, you know, this gives you a medium to share your, your story and a platform to do so. But it's important because not only do you want to create good content, but of course you have to build audience. And, you know, it's, it's so powerful as the two of you know, is to have that platform so you can bring other experts in, you can do collaborations like that. You know, we, you can, you can reach so many more people, but if you don't do live streaming, then basically um, you're fighting really hard to get people to pay attention to you. And I always say in business, right? If, if you're not out there, then it says that I'm not interested in doing business with you. Right. Like, so I could spend, spend some time with the two of you, my good friends on this beautiful show. And right now people know that I'm still looking for business. I'm available for business. And why do they know that is because I've got live streams still out there for people to play. I've got YouTube videos, got Google stuff. We've got, you know, we got all this stuff out there that's always active every single week. There's new content coming out every single week. So you're going to be top of mind when someone's interested. I mean, proof, I'll give you some proof, like this process during COVID, um, you know, could have been very, very difficult because typically relationships like ours, when you're dealing with very wealthy individuals is something you do one-on-one, -on -one. but through this process, because of live streaming, because of the comfort of the in front of the camera and video, this is actually going to hopefully be one of the years that we actually bring on more new clients this year than in, in maybe in the last 20 years. I don't even know. At this point, it feels that way. It feels like we're just bringing so much business and it couldn't have happened if we didn't use live streaming as a medium. So I never thought live streaming would actually produce direct revenue, like perhaps like this Amazon live show would, but, um, but I always thought and I always knew that in order to have new business, people knew, needed to know that I existed. And if you don't exist, then they can't do business with you. So you've got to find a way to continue to tell your story. And the more you can share, the more they get to know you. Just like, you know, we're getting our quality time together. But people are also <laughs> people who are watching are starting to get to know us better, too, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing to it's one thing to Google you, um, you know, to Google my name and find out I'm a jerk. <laughs> it's it's another thing if they Google my Ouch. name and they find nothing. Yeah, if they find nothing, it's worse. <laughs> you know, so especially if I'm you know I'm representing some sort of business or some sort of brand. If you Google my name or you Google Dealcasters and you don't come up, you know, it's close. like, have you ever asked somebody like, where, where can I find you on? And it, all you've got to do is say, it's my name. Like if you type my, if you type in Winnie Sun mm -hmm. on Google, you're absolutely going to find all of the stuff that we talked about and, and more and, you know, level up and loop and, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, your website and everything, but that, it really is important because Google and search really likes it when you're doing all of that stuff and all of that stuff connects yeah. and it's just going to get you out there and found and you're going to, you have a better chance of getting business. Now, Winnie, exactly. do, you, do you turn any of your shows into podcast or they, they strictly stay as live streams? So, um, yeah, Curse, we do. Like, I, we're supposed to. We're supposed to be pulling the audio and then making them podcasts. But lately, we've been so busy because obviously the volume, right, of the mm -hmm. content. So I think we're a little behind on that. But typically, yes, we do. We have, I think we have. We two, get behind too. Yeah. Do you? Well, we. A little we, bit. Yeah. It, it happens, but, you know, like it's okay. We don't sweat the little stuff. It's, right. But yeah. But we do. Yeah, that's a good question. And and you can because it's so easy. I guess with software, you just pull it. And there's all these little there's I would say, you know, what you want to do is like like the two of you have it's 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 totally doable as a, a solo. Like I, I I'm doing all my own filming and everything. Yeah, you can do it. But it's so much more fun when somebody else is in that picture on your team because um, it just you grow together. And I, I was think, I think if you're going to do this, you're thinking about going live streaming, find a buddy, <laughs> find a Chris and Jim. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris, 
<laughs> we'll have to make a new shirt, Chris. Just just for, for uh, what do you come with that? There we go. There we go. That's a that's a good deal. Excellent. Well, Winnie, we um we don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm sure you have live streams and broadcasts and all kinds of things uh, stacked uh, stacked in your day. I can't believe uh, you know that you're here on our show. Thank you so much for taking um, the time. I know uh, here on Amazon, there's been a ton of people that are, that are jumping in the chat. It was Johnny Kong. It was David Burrows. There's a, there's a lot of people that have jumped in here on Amazon and they want to know when you're going to go live. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that are saying, episode one, let us know. There's, a, there's all kinds of stuff. So you're already creating demand just, uh, just by being here with us. We, we got to hang out, but just like it, it proved your point. Right, you you went live here, and now there's already pent up demand Aww. for you to go live yourself on your channel, Winnie. So that's exciting. Well, send me a direct message. Tell me what I should do live on, um, and I would I would love to get your feedback. And um, you know, the really fun thing about like your show as long, as well as my show is like what I love about live versus just traditional television is that we actually get to talk to each other. So I would love to find out what you would love in a show, and let's you know let's make it happen. Yeah. But certainly if I do do that show, I got to have these guys all day long because <laughs> let me tell you, like, they're, they're just like, as you can tell, just want to hug them. They're so nice. They're so nice. Yeah. Well, we wish you, you could come out to Lima uh, next week. We could all uh, meet up. We'll be I in know, Jessica's Jessica. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I know. And I heard she gives out the best swag. <laughs> yes. That's what I've heard. So, so yeah, we'll have you to know? get you out there one of these years, Winnie. I think, I think it's a, uh, a day is coming. Uh, maybe when your kids are, a little older too, but uh, but I know you're always yeah. traveling, Winnie. So what what is the times that your shows are at so people can catch them on some of the other non Amazon networks? Sure. So it's pretty much every day, uh, two thirty Pacific or five thirty Eastern, depending where you're joining from. Um, and you know, if you don't catch it live, you can always catch it on a replay. I will say live is a lot more fun because I can see your comments, and I oftentimes will quote you um, as part of our show. So we, we love to see you there. Um, but, you know, I think that's the thing is uh, after having gone every single day, same type of thing, I will go live whenever I feel like it. So sometimes I'm done with, I usually do Fox um, every Monday morning. Sometimes I'm like, oh, you know what? That was really fun. I'm going to go live and I just go live. So I would say, follow me on any platform that you prefer. And it's just Winnie Sun, like Winnie the Pooh, Sun in the Sky. And then turn on that little notification bell and maybe that will just surprise you right I do that. and don't forget wednesdays at 2 p.m eastern if you are a twitter person the winnie Ooh, sun yeah. tweet chat that's always a lot of fun i do my best to get there when uh, not getting pulled away doing other things but it's definitely on my calendar every week Thank you. So the fun fact on that is that it's the biggest business suite chat on social media. We have it 150 million impressions per week. And as of March, I got to check the numbers now, but as of March of this year, we passed hashtag Winnie Sun passed the 25 billion mark. Wow. So that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. fun billion fact. with a B. Wow. B with a boo. <laughs> and and wow. so Chris, um, you're always asking me about Twitter chats. Now, now you know. <laughs> now I know. You're gonna have now to come, know. Isa. You know what? Yeah, I always say it's the nicest people on social media. I mean, obviously Jim's there, so you, so this is proof of that. But it's literally the nicest <laughs> people on social media on our chat. We don't have any meanies. So you come, you come as like you can come and just hang out, and we'll like you'll leave as a friend. We'll take good care of you. Absolutely. Awesome. This has been amazing. Thanks so much uh, for, for joining us. I know that there are tons of people here uh, on Amazon and the other tubes who decided not to come over to, to Amazon um, that feel like, um, you know, they're just hanging out with um, a real person. This is not, uh, this is not, this is what you get right here. This is Winnie Sun. And thank you again for, uh, for sharing all of this amazing information. Um, and as always, don't fear the gear. Thanks for listening to Deal Catchers. Congratulations, you've taken another step forward in your content creation journey. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button here in your favorite podcast player so you can be reminded every time we drop an episode. We love hearing from our listeners and viewers. If you're wanting to watch our shows live on Amazon, feel free to follow Deal Casters Live as well at dealcasters.com. Follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
where we also include added content that you cannot find anywhere else. If you have questions about this episode or have something you want us to review, you can also email us at dealcasters at dealcasters.live. Thanks again for listening, and you know the deal. Don't fear the deal.